Chapel Roan is living proof that it takes 10 years to become an overnight success and that the universe is preparing you for your moment, even when you don't know what that moment actually is yet. This girl was born in Willard, Missouri, a population of 6,000 people, and she had been uploading covers to YouTube since she was 14 years old. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I love this already. I'm hooked. Finally, by 2017, she gets signed to a record label. So she moves 1,600 miles from home to Los Angeles. But after one EP, she gets dropped. Oh. Not only that, within these... That must be so painful to get picked up and then dropped. But that shows her consistency. The fact that she's popping off now. I bet that record label is screaming on a missed opportunity. But also, I think that actually matters because I think who picks you up can change your trajectory of success. I've seen so many talented YouTubers get record deals and fail, and I blame the record label. I blame the record label. The same week she gets dropped, her partner of four years breaks up with her. And I think that this is the moment Mm. in her life which then later went on to inspire her to write the song My Kink is Karma about this person. Hey, good news. They weren't your person and now you can find your real person. Okay. No big deal. Everybody comes into our life to be a life lesson or our person. And there's nothing wrong with a life lesson. This devastates her. And for two years, she has to work as a production assistant, a nanny. She works as a barista just to make ends meet and and support herself. And even after two years of that, she still at one point has to move home back to Missouri just to make enough money to even try to be an independent artist. Mm. But the last song she ever worked on with her first label is a little song called Pink Pony Club. And she worked with the- Okay, I don't know what is happening with this wedding dress, but I'm literally living through it. Little tidbit about Britney lore. When I was like nine, 10 years old, my parents let me pick my first Halloween costume all on my own with no help. I wore my Holy Communion dress dress so I might have been like 10 or 11 I wore my holy communion dress and a skull mask and I was a dead bride and every time I went to go get candy at the Halloween houses they'd be like oh my god like what are you and I'm like I'm a dead bride my parents literally thought it was too much but they let me express my goth ass and it worked and was beautiful and to this day I'm so grateful that my religious parents were cool enough to let me be a dead bride for Halloween producer named Dan Nigro back in 2020 Later that year, the same man, Dan Nigro, goes on to produce a different album called Sour by Olivia Rodrigo, which goes on to be the largest debut album for a female artist in history. And needless to say, he gets pretty busy working. So I know Olivia Rodrigo's name, but I could not tell you any of her music, but I know her name. I know she's, I know her name. That's how I know it must have worked. On Olivia Rodrigo. So she not only lost her label, but she lost the producer who she was making the music with. And I'm sure this must have been devastating. Mm. Imagine having to move back home after working for two years. That's the question. Am I successful yet? You'll never know. I mean, if careers can be slaughtered overnight because of reputation, at the end of the day, what is success? It's about, I guess, keeping it going. I don't even know. It's like you tell everybody at home, I finally made it. What does it mean to finally make it? That's a really important question to ask yourself, whether you're creative or not. Because whether you're creative or not, there are lots of people who struggle. Like you ever meet a guy in sales and he's like, oh, I say I do sales. And you're like, okay, but like, are you good at it? Sales is a very finicky market. So what does I finally made it in my job of sales look like, or I finally made it at whatever career you're doing. Thinking your entire dreams are lost, then the next person, the producer you worked with, works with, ends up having the highest debut of any female in history. But did she let this get her down? No. No. She kept making music. And it was actually Dan who connected her to Olivia one day to allow her to open for the Guts and Sour Tours. Fast forward two years later, in 2022, finally Chapel can start to record with Dan again. And then they start to write an album called The Rise and Fall of Midwest Princess. Mm. And Dan was so inspired by working with Chapel at this time, and he was so shocked that a label had dropped her, that he decided to start his own small imprint label with within Island Records. Fun fact, Viggo Mortensen, after Lord of the Rings, and after he sort of like took a little bit of a chill part of his life, opened up a small publishing company for independent authors to have an opportunity to get seen. I think that's really interesting when people realize like there is a niche community that's being underrepresented. Let me advance myself and advance them. And it's not a pity party. 
sometimes there's this illusion of people who help out small content creators because of pity. I don't want to help you out because of pity. I don't want to be helped out because of pity. I want to be seen for the like value that's there and like have it mean something, right? There's something about this that I think people miss, which is you do not want to get picked because you're pitied. You want to be picked because you have something to offer people and you want to be, you know, uplifted for that reason alone. I think that's why people resent Nepo babies because it feels like you got the reward of being picked without you having anything to offer. But the truth is, is that that's either going to work or it's not going to work. But if you're an independent artist, it's nice to be noticed for your, yes, talent. Aeneas says talent. Yes, it's nice to be noticed for your talent. Just to sign Chapel Roan, which brings us to September of 2023 when she finally oh, releases her date. Amazing outfit. Look at this. What is this? See, I just sometimes... I think about quitting YouTube and just doing OF so I can wear costumes like this and going on TikTok and Instagram and just making fashion things for the girlies. Do you know I also, I almost went to fit him. I almost went to the fashion college. I know it was a dream. In one part of my life, I was going to be a fashion designer. I know it was a whole arc. I used to just do the fa fashion club in school. It's a thing. Now I don't, I do this. But yes, there's a part of my little brain that is like quit everything and go into this, whatever this is. Make clothes that people, that you put on, in, just do this, whatever this is. New album, Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess, and then by February of 2024, she was the opener for Olivia Rodrigo's Guts Tour. She's on tour with Olivia until April, and then she makes the genius decision to leave the tour early so that she can play Coachella. Not only that, in the same week. True, Tokyo says wear them, we will like the stream. That's true, I could just wear them per stream. See, I turned my hobby, my main hobby, into a job. It would be a side hustle. This would be a side quest. And one day, when I'm done with this like main quest thing I'm doing, there will be a side quest. That's why I'm telling you, my 40s are gonna be so great. Uh, the side, the main, ooh, the girl, my 40s are gonna be so good. Ooh, look how good this is. Ooh, look at this vibe. This is the vibe. Uh, look at, mwah, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Now don't get me wrong. I want YouTube to be my main hustle. I love it the most. I'm not picking YouTube because it makes me the most money. If I did fashion or, or OF or whatever, I could do that too. I'm doing it because it is the main passion in my life. It is the most passion I have. It's what keeps me up at night. I'm not being kept up by night at night doing clothes, guys. I'm keep being kept up at night thinking about philosophy. Like my brain is all about philosophy right now. So realistically, I don't want to sell myself short. I picked the, the thing that is the most important to me. That's why I say pay attention to what's the most important to you. And then the side quests are side quests. But this is what I want to do primarily. If I I had to pick, I picked what I wanted to pick. So shout out, pick what you want to pick and go into it 100%. But then pay attention to your side quests because those are also options for later. But they're side quests for a reason, guys. They are side quests for a reason. She releases Good Luck Babe. And this song went crazy. This is her first song to ever debut in the top 100 at 77th place. Not only that, in the week after Coachella, her monthly listeners double. Woo! And now just one month after that, we see her in Boston drawing in a bigger crowd than the headliner, Ed Sheeran, and how rapidly her career has exploded since literally just February. And what you have to learn from this is that sometimes life has to completely tear you down to make space for new things to come and to grow. I mean, this girl had to get dropped from her label, get broken up with by her significant other, work for two years, and then you see how that experience not only meet her meet a incredible producer who then became her record label, mm -hmm. who then she then opened for an artist through that same producer and also wrote multiple songs on this album. I mean, My Kink is Karma, Casual, uh, Good Luck Babe, all these songs about going through the misfortune fortune of this relationship and of this circumstance and you realize in hindsight like wow had she not gone through all of that she would not have been able to write the music or be in the place or meet the people that she did to get to where she is today and that is part of like it is a weird thing to think about that sometimes um you have to to clear the way or, or things have to die in order for new things to grow. True. And when that is happening to you, don't shy away from it. Embrace it and, and keep pursuing in your dream because sometimes it is just making room for new, better things to come. I love her aesthetic so much. I love it. It really does take a long time. And I think that's also reassuring that if you keep working on it, it will matter. Like, oh my gosh, I can't tell you, like, I'm really feeling so good about my workout routine right now. I'm feeling so confident in my muscles and everything, like even my abs. Oh my God, my stomach. Like I'm definitely seeing a lot of changes. My diet's been like fire. It's been so good. I've been eating good. 
I've been eating good, but like, you know, within reason. And it's really amazing that it does take long, but it takes dedication. And it takes like, I think I saw, I heard a gym person say something that really like resonated with me, which is like, yes, you're going to do the same five exercises every day for the next three years. And it's going to make a difference. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, thank God you don't have to change up your routine and do all these weird exercises. You can choose five different variations of an exercise and do that for the next three years and it'll be great. Because there's this idea that you have to do all these crazy things and all these things have to be just like insane. And you have to, ch and I need a routine, girl. So now that I'm down to a routine and I'm doing this routine, I have seen more of a difference in my body and it's so rewarding. And it took a while and it will continue to take a while. Like all these gym girls I watch say like, look, this body took three to five years. And that is reassuring to me more than discouraging. Cause I'm like, okay, three to five years, which means I have time, but also I will see the difference. And it's so true. Same with YouTube, same with everything else. Reminder that though I've been on YouTube for over a decade, I didn't truly 100% go in a thousand percent until I was 30. And within five years, I not only was able to do it full, completely full time with no doubt that I would be able to do it full time, but it keeps getting better every day. When I put a hundred percent into my career, it technically took me five years. If you don't count any of the stuff beforehand, just because I took it completely seriously. Cause I've always dabbled. I've always thought maybe I'll be a YouTuber. Maybe I won't. And when I became really serious about it, boom, it paid off and it pays off every day. This was my dream and I accomplished it and I continue to accomplish it every day. And in the future, in my 40s, may I go on a side quest as good as Julia Fox's main main, main storyline. Julia Fox has like one of my favorite storylines and it can't be my main quest, but girl, I'm gonna make it a side quest eventually to be that fabulous. Like I just love her fashion. I love the clothes. I love the way she like puts imagery together. And I think that's what's so important is like play to your strengths and everything will feel so much better. Life is so much better when you're living and not just surviving. But I couldn't stop surviving until I went 100% in. Because remember, I always had one foot out the door. If you guys haven't seen my podcast on my unaliving year, but I always had one foot out the door. Even choosing to live was a part of me putting 100% in. The same year, the same month, I chose to keep living I chose to be serious about YouTube. I chose to be serious about my life. Eh, maybe not exactly the month, but you know what I mean. The same time frame that I 100% decided to keep, like, to stay alive and not ever do it, never even think about it or self-harm again was the same moment of time that I decided to do YouTube full-time. And once that happened, my life changed and I really learned how to live. I really, it was me though. I had to make the decision and it was timing. Timing is kind of important. Jamin says, which podcast? Uh, on my main page, if you guys want to check out my podcast, it's a little bit in, I'm not doing it right now just because like I'm doing too many things. So it's, you know, but all of the former podcast episodes are fucking good. You should listen to it. It's on my main page in a playlist. You can check it out. You'll find it. It's one of my most recent um, podcasts. Haley says surviving for so long makes it feel like living is going to make surviving harder or hard. It's just so terrifying going all in. It is so terrifying and yet the biggest relief ever. You know what? living instead of surviving felt like it felt like diving into a lake that was dark and you didn't know what was underneath it but what you discovered was like chilling water that made you feel more alive than you've ever felt it's not, it looks scary but living is better than any maladaptive daydreaming i did as a younger person in order to cope with life all of those fantasies i used to dive into so i didn't have to live my life None of them were as good as the life that I ended up living. And as much as I live or I miss my maladaptive daydreaming days and escaping into stories, I just decided to have a good one instead. My story is pretty damn good. And it only got better when I decided to live. It wasn't that great when I was just surviving. But as you know, we don't always get to pick <laughs> how our story starts out. But we get to sort of have a huge say in how it continues and how it ends. Within reason. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool dun, dun, dun.